Good morning, ErgoFlex family. I want to talk to you uh, about the concepts of static traction and intermittent traction. Um, I had an interesting conversation over the weekend with a doctor who had done 10 plus years of uh, training with Pedibon. <clears throat> and if you know anything about Pedibon or even chiropractic biophysics, a lot of their work is all about static traction. Um, they've got great research that backs it all up. Everything's fantastic. I'm not knocking their system in any, any way, shape or form. Um, but if any of you like me have been on static traction, um, static traction is not comfortable in the least. Um, and the main reason why that is occurring is because in order for you to get joint movement, you have to exhaust the muscle. Okay, and the reason why you have to exhaust the muscle is because it's going into a splint mechanism, which is a protective mechanism. So anytime you distract, decompress, traction, however you want to say it, any type of joint in the body, the immediate response is for the body to go into a muscle splint. And the two specific mechanisms are the Golgi tendon apparatus and the muscle spindle apparatus, okay? So from a neurological standpoint, when we get stretched, um, and especially too far, say like um, in a car accident, or in, let's, let's look at a baseball picture, uh, it's not the acceleration mo movement, right? This isn't the one that gets them in trouble. It's when their arm is actually slowing down. That's typically where they start to have injury. And, the, and what happens is the protective mechanism gets overridden, right? Because the, mo the muscle spindle and the Golgi tendon, something happens in that, learn that neurological set that it can no longer protect that joint. And then that's when we start to fatigue, that's when we start to have tears. <clears throat> so, you know, we were, we were discussing, he basically came up and he looked at the back on track and he got on it and he got on the knee on track and he got off and, um, and he, he wanted both of those systems to be put in static traction, which they will do. Uh, and there's, there's good time to do strat static traction, especially like on the knee on track. Um, it, let's say you've got almost no joint space. You're truly bone on bone and you're trying to do an allograft stem cell injection in that joint. Use protocol one, put it on 20 pounds. It'll move out statically to 20 pounds and hold that, all right? You can put it on pause or you can set it for six minutes, whatever you want to do. That joint space is going to be opened up and now you can get the needle in place where it needs to be and actually put that material, that injection where it should be because you got the bone separated. You don't have to be worried about scraping. That is no fun, guys. If you've ever seen that happen or if you've ever had it happen to you, because I have, if it bounces off that meniscus or off the bone, it is not fun. It hurts. So you can use the neon track to actually get an injection in place in static. <clears throat> now, so his whole premise was that I don't like intermittent traction because you can't get the joint space open. And he, and, and he said to me, he goes, you have to fatigue the muscle in order to get the joint space to open up. And I said, well, okay, I, yes, I agree with you, but why not just not have that problem? Why not, from a neurological standpoint, just sidestep the whole concept of the muscle splinting action? That is intermittent traction, okay? Not only intermittent traction, but intermittent traction with vibration. So what you're doing is, as we intermittently traction, any, any joint in the muscle system itself, as we distract and traction, the body's reaction is to splint against that, okay? Well, if you back off 25 to 50%, you reset the mechanism because it comes back under pressure a little bit, and then you can move further, okay? Post isometric stretching is what, this is what this is all about. This is across the board what you can do with any joint mechanism. This is trigenics, this is ART. It is well, well understood, okay? So either you can blow through the, the, the spasm and muscle splinting with increased force, okay? You can pull harder and do it, but you gotta burst through that muscle splinting action, 
or you can sidestep that whole mechanism through intermittent traction. Patient be much more comfortable, much less sore. You have a much higher compliance rate. And in my experience, you have a much higher internal referral rate. Patients get off the knee on track and the back on track and they go, that was great. I got a friend that could use that as well. You get somebody, you put somebody on, <clears throat> let's just say a dental roll for five minutes for the first time. They come off that thing. They hate that thing. They don't like that thing at all. There's, wait a minute. There's one of two reactions, right? It's like that thing's the best ever. And then they come back in the next day and they say, I'm so sore. I can't see straight. Or they hate the thing and you can't get them back on it if you do that right away. Okay. So static traction, while it has fantastic results, is can be very, very, very uncomfortable for the patient. I prefer to have a patient that is happy. And if you have a happy patient, then you have a compliant patient. And compliant and happy patients refer other people to you. That's my premise. But it, it was interesting because as I went through the neurological set, through the small diameter, large diameter, the afferents, <clears throat> and the entire spinal thalamic tract and how it decusates at the brainstem and when it hits the parietal P3 and P4. I went through that whole mechanism with this doctor and then he was so ingrained in what, uh, in what he was thinking that he, he wasn't listening to the neurological explanation, which was unfortunate. He's a nice guy, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I, it really, I, I was like, Wow. I said, so if, if I'm talking to this guy, then I know there's other doctors out there that have reservations about intermittent traction. And, and understand you can use it in both, in both manners. I have a tremendous amount of clinical experience with intermittent traction, intermittent decompression. Um, and I probably have just as much exp experience with static traction and curve restoration. Um, and I can tell you, patients are much happier at intermittent they're much happier, uh, they're much more comfortable, and, and they refer more people to you to actually get them. That's been my clinical experience, okay? So if you have any questions specifically about static versus intermittent traction, let me know, dr.wyatt at backontrack.com or post on the ErgoFlex Facebook page or the Chiropractic Instruments of Success. Don't forget about Tuesdays, our Chiropractic Instruments of Success show. Yesterday was absolutely phenomenal with Kylie, uh, Kylie Wong. Uh, he played for the Vikings and the Texans as defensive captain. He did a nine-year stint in the NFL, which is impressive in itself. Then he went on into the corporate world. And he had some absolutely mind-blowing ideas that um, have brought a whole new level to the way I'm thinking about what we can do for exercise with oxygen therapy and the simple breathing techniques that we need to put in place. So again, post on the Facebook pages, contact me directly with any questions. I'd be happy to help. Have a great one.